Hi and welcome to my channel Galactic Bacon. Um, my video today is going to be an Elite Dangerous Hauler Explorer build and the hauler is a great second ship to buy uh, once you're ready to move on from the Sidewinder um, if you're starting out in this game and it's not a bad ship for getting started with exploration. It's got a pretty decent base jump range uh, for us to work with, which you're going to need for exploring the Elite Dangerous Universe. Um, but having said that, there are far better ships out there if you want to do some serious exploring in this game, such as the Diamondback Explorer, the Asp Explorer and the Anaconda uh, as well. Um, but if you do want to dip a toe in the water with exploration and you don't have a lot of money to spend then the hauler is not a bad choice. Um, so today I wanted to show you the kind of ship build you would need if you want to go exploring in your hauler. Um, now the first thing you're going to have to do is find a, a space station where you can buy the modules that you need and for that you're going to have to find a high-tech uh, system. If you don't know how to find a high-tech system very quickly um, there's two ways you can do this. Go to your galaxy map and then use the filters. Filter by economy under your map configuration. Uh, select high tech in the filters and all the systems that are highlighted in blue are your high tech systems. So find one of those, okay, um, so that's one way of doing it using the galaxy map. The other way is a little tool which is very very helpful for all aspects of the game and it's called eddb.io, uh, a website and if you go there on the home page and then look under, click on stations Um, the first thing to do is enter in your reference system LHS 1832 that's where I am at the moment and then add in the kind of a few of the kind of modules that you might need so say uh, FSD uh, where are we I think we've got to type the whole thing in Frame shift drive, so let's click uh, for the hauler. Uh, size 2 frame shift drive is the maximum that we can have. And what else do we need? Fuel scoop would be something else. Okay. Um, and then just click on find stations. And then you have a list of stations in your vicinity that you will be able to get all the equipment that you're going to, to need. Uh, very handy tool indeed. Okay, let's go back to our ship. Um, now, um, you're going to have to fly to a high-tech station. It needs to be a starport. Outposts and high-tech systems won't have the modules you need, so don't bother going to any of those. Um, so... What I have at the moment is a bog standard hauler. Um, I did have upgraded units, but I have put them all in storage so that I am starting out with a, a sort of brand new build. Um, so if I go to outfitting, and then on the outfitting screen, you will notice um, at the bottom of the screen the ship specs. It has some data there that is important for us to to note as we um, upgrade our ship for exploration um, so we have our total mass at the bottom that's an important number to note and that's in tons um, we also have our power and then at the very bottom we have our jump range uh, both the minimum the current jump range and the maximum um, so these are numbers we're all going to have to 
keep an eye on as we swap out modules now. To do exploration, uh, one of the most important things is to try and increase your jump range. Um, that's going to make things much easier for you. You're going to be able to travel further. Also, um, the distance between stars, you don't want to get caught out um, with being unable to uh, jump um, between two systems. Um, and so your maximum jump range is really important. Uh, now, by the end of this video, you'll maybe get an idea for what the maximum jump range of a hauler might be. I would not recommend taking a hauler out to the um, the far distant reaches of uh, the universe um, because the further and further you get out, the further and further away the stars are going to be. You may find yourself stranded and unable to, um, to jump between systems. Um, with a uh, a better ship, uh, you know, you will have a, a higher jump range and better equipped to, to be able to avoid those situations. Um, so the hauler does have limits uh, in terms of jump range, but it's still a pretty decent uh, ship for the beginner uh, to start using. So, where to begin? Uh, we're going to begin with our core internals and one thing to note is as you go through the modules you'll notice that some modules have weight or mass uh, next to them um, so power plant has a mass of 2.5 tons uh, the lightweight alloys have no weight um, now obviously in reality <laughs> uh, in a real ship they are going to have weight but at least in elite um, they don't contribute to the weight of the ship. So some modules do contribute to the weight of the ship and that affects your maximum jump range. So the heavier the ship is, the less the jump range. So what we're trying, going to try and do is balance the modules that we need with the total weight of our ship. And so you'll notice there that the power plant has 2.5 tonnes, uh, many of the modules have weight, but then you have some that are lighter than others, and some such as sensors, um, well, sorry, sensors do have weight. Um, the fuel tank itself doesn't, so that's just something to, to watch out for. Now, one of the things that's going to make the biggest difference is upgrading our frame shift drive. So if I go into the shop at the moment, You'll notice we have all our frame shift drives there up to the 2A, which is going to be your top of the range. And as I scroll through the frame shift drive, watch my maximum jump range at the bottom of the screen. You'll see it changing as I go through the jump ranges with the 2A. It goes right up to 24.51 light years. Um... So, so as we swap out modules, we're going to keep an eye on that jump range and see what it's going to be doing. Um, now, one thing you'll notice between the different modules is, I mean, I could go ahead and put a 2A frame shift drive in straight away. Um, in this account, I've not got a, a huge amount of money, but... Um, what I'm going to do, um, I would sacrifice everything else to have a 2A, a size A, um, sort of class A frame shift drive, um, you know, from the word go. That's going to make the, the biggest difference. So I'm going to install one of those from the go. And I'm going to put the other one into storage for the time being. Now, with, with that new frameshift drive, you'll notice that my power requirements have increased uh, a little bit. Um, so I would recommend swapping out your power plant. Um, 
and you'll notice that that does have an effect on the jump range as well. The the 2D, um, the D-Class modules always tend to be a little bit lighter than the C-Class. You'll notice the 2D power plant is one ton compared to the 2C. To be honest, there's not an awful lot of difference in the jump range, so I'm going to go for the 2C at this point. Two, the the B-Class units are always quite a bit heavier. Um, and that is because they're designed to withstand more damage, such as in combat, etc. So I'm going to fit a 2C power plant. Uh, actually, I think I have one of these in storage. So I'm going to transfer power plant. Okay. Um, we've got our thrusters, and these do have a small difference, they can make a small difference um, in our jump range. Um, mainly that is because of weight, um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to fit 2D thrusters because that does seem to make a little bit of a difference. I'll just check I haven't got any of these in storage first. Um, yeah, I do. Okay. Okay, so we're now at 26.78 light years, which if you remember, my initial jump range was just over 11. Um, it, you know, we're making significant progress here. Uh, let's see what else we can swap out. We're going to leave uh, life support can't do without that. Um, these are all core internals, so we need all of this stuff. I would actually change power distributor as well. Um, this does have a small effect on jump range. By going for a D-class, we could make another little gain there. Uh, I'll store the old one. Okay. Right. We're not going to touch fuel tank or anything like that. Okay, moving to optional internals. Now, you would think the car cargo racks, we have cargo of eight on our hauler. You would think swapping out cargo racks would make a difference to our weight, but actually it, it doesn't. It's um, only if you actually have items within the cargo rack, um, it will make a difference to the weight. Um, Okay, so we've got a shield generator. The one we've got at the moment is 2.5 tons. I'm going to swap that out for something else. I think I have a D class. Uh, do I have a D? Oh, wait a minute. Wrong module. Hold on. Maybe I don't. I'm pretty certain I had another module. Yeah, I have a, a 2D shield generator. You'll see the difference that that makes in my jump range. So that takes us up to 29. Which is great. Um, super cruise assist, there's no weight in that. Docking computer, we can leave that. Planetary approach suite, we can leave that as well. Um, okay, now, <coughs> there's a few things we're going to, we're going to need. Uh, now, the super cruise assist, if you haven't, looked into what this is for I mean you may be tempted to get rid of this I, I would actually keep it in place for exploration if you're a, a beginner to Elite Dangerous one of the most common ways that people get into trouble doing exploration is perhaps not paying attention when you come into a new system and you come flying into a star 
uh, before you know it, your ship is burning up. Um, the super cruise assist just helps uh, slow your ship down automatically when you're approaching a, a new system. Uh, you may have noticed that in the game. Uh, this did not used to be standard equipment in Elite Dangerous. Um, try flying without it. You may be surprised. Uh, it, 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 it can present some difficulties. Uh, a little bit more fun flying without it, uh, in my opinion. But um, if you're a beginner, I suggest keeping Super Cruise Assist uh, there. Now, we're going to need a fuel scoop. is an absolute must for exploration. Um, if you go beyond the bubble, which is inhabited space with space stations, etc., um, you're going to find yourself not being able to refuel or even repair, uh, for that matter, uh, once you're out beyond the bubble, beyond inhabited space. So you're going to have to be able to scoop stars for fuel. Now, we've got some different options here. You know, we could put a, a size one fuel scoop in there, but we have cargo racks that are redundant. So, if we put one of those into storage, what we could do is see if there is a a big chunky fuel scoop we could put in there. Uh, where are we? Fuel scoops. There we are. Yeah. So, it's a size 3 fuel scoop. Um, we could we could put in there but it's only an E class um, so what's its scoop rate 0 0.08 tons per second how does that compare with a a 1C yep it's still better than that yep so I'm going to fit one of these Okay, we're still at 29.08 light years. Um, so, what else do we need? Let's see. Yep, the other item which is, which you really need for doing proper um, exploration is a detailed surface scanner, but you can see I have insufficient credits to fit one of these at the moment, and I guess if you if you're flying a hauler because you don't have enough money to buy another bigger ship like an ASP, then detailed surface scanner is perhaps not the item you want to fit. If you can afford anything, get a, a Class A frameshift drive. That's going to give you the biggest benefit. Okay, uh, let's see. I think that is probably all we can do here at the moment on our internal optionals. Um, the other thing to look at is hard points. Um, now the pulse laser is two tons. It's probably not doing you any good to to be honest. Um, you know it's you're not going to save yourself if you come up against a, a much bigger ship. So if I put that into storage, what does that do for me? Wow, I jump up to 31.43 light years jump range. Uh, we also have our utility mounts and we have a couple of little sort of point defense units. Um, these might be helpful if you get interdicted by somebody, but um, to be honest, you know, way beyond the bubble, that is unlikely to happen. Um, what I would suggest is if you're a little bit worried about, you know, somebody attacking your ship, if you fly to the, the, the furthest out station that you can find at the edge of the bubble, store your unessential modules there, so um, you basically lighten the load of your ship before you go beyond 
inhabited space and the likelihood of you being attacked is a lot more re remote so I'm going to store these just now and see what it does to our jump range maybe a very small benefit and I'll get rid of that one as well Wow, 32.75 light years is our maximum jump range, which is absolutely fantastic. That is actually more than what I thought it would be before I started uh, this video. Um, so I'd encourage you to play around with your modules, see uh, if you may even be able to improve on the figure I've come up with uh, for the hauler. Um, but it gives you an idea of the process you would go through to um, equip the hauler um, and perhaps other ships as well um, for exploration. Um, if you're maybe interested in uh, using the Galaxy Map filter that I showed you before and finding modules, uh, if you have a look at an earlier video, I'll indicate it in the top right just now, uh, where I do, where I look at FSD upgrades and how to find uh, the ones you're you, you're looking for uh, using both the Galaxy Map and the tool I showed you earlier. Uh, you'll find it in that video. Um, also, if you're starting out in Elite Dangerous and looking for some guidance, you should check out my Beginner's Guide playlist, which is also indicated in the top right just now. And uh, if you'd like to be notified about future videos, please subscribe, click the bell icon below and check out the description also for other videos and feel free to leave a question in the comments if there's anything you want to ask um, about exploration or about the hauler uh, or anything like that. I always appreciate the comments and I appreciate some of you guys who have been subscribing to my channel you know, coming back as well and viewing the other videos, it's always appreciated. Um, so thanks for watching, fly safe and I'll see you next time.